Hey YouTube, it's Tyler the Antenna Man. Today I'm going to talk about ATSC 3.0 or Next Gen TV. It's a new television standard that's going to be launched in the coming years that's set to replace the current over the air TV standard that we are using in the United States. First of all, what is a television standard? A television standard has to do with the technology and way a TV station broadcasts their TV signal over the air. Back in 1940, we had NTSC that was launched, pretty much the most basic analog black and white TV broadcast that was picked up on channels 2 through 13. Eventually, color TV came into play, a color standard that was backwards compatible with the old black and white standard. So if you had an old black and white TV, you could still receive over the air broadcasts. By the way, antenna companies began to market and push color antennas around the same time the color standard launched and color TV sets were sold in stores. Kind of confusing people into thinking that they need a special color antenna to pick up new color broadcasts. If this sounds familiar, it is because they're doing the same exact thing with HD and digital antennas. There's no such thing as a color HD digital 4K antenna. Antennas are designed to pick up certain frequencies on the VHF and UHF band, and it doesn't matter what the standard is, whether it is analog, digital, 4K, or HD. The old analog NTSC standard lasted a pretty long time for over-the-air TV broadcasts, but in the early 1990s, ATSC 1.0 was developed. At the time, this was very revolutionary because it allowed stations to broadcast HD content, multiple stations on one signal, Dolby 5.1 surround sound, and a bunch of other benefits that made it seem superior to the old analog signal. ATSC 1.0 is the current digital standard that the United States and Canada and some other countries still use to this date. Again, it was developed in the 1990s, and at the time it looked very revolutionary, but as many of you know, it is very fragile and not the best for people in remote areas or even with a lot of buildings. It's not good at multipath interference, so if you have tall buildings around or a bunch of cars that go by with an indoor antenna, you'll see the signal constantly will break up and pixelate just because of the multipath interference interference. Another issue with the current TV standard is that the antenna has to be in a fixed location for reliable reception. That ultimately killed the concept of portable TV tuners that you can use anywhere and not have any pixelization, or TV tuners on your phone, watching TV in the car for your kids. Those concepts were killed with the current standard. And I must say it kind of sucks because I used to love as a kid using my portable little Sony Watchman to pick up very far away TV stations no matter where I was at, whether I I was in a building, whether I was in a car, I was still able to get some kind of broadcast, but now you need a pretty decent directional antenna just for reliable reception of your local stations. Right around the digital transition of 2009, two other standards were already in the works to at least combat the issue with the current ATSC 1.0 standard. They were ATSC M slash H, which stood for mobile handheld, and ATSC 2.0. Nothing ever really happened with ATSC 2.0, but with ATSC M slash H, several TV stations across the country began broadcasting this format that was meant to be sent to mobile phones and small devices, but it never really took off because there was not enough support from the broadcasters themselves. This brings me into the discussion of ATSC 3.0 or Next Gen TV. ATSC 3.0 is supposed to offer 4K TV broadcasts, on-demand content, interactive content, and may even solve some reception issues with people that live very close to the transmitters and have a lot of multipath interference. The standard also allows mobile viewing on a tablet or even a smartphone with a certain chipset built into it. This would be a great change for the current standard because as I mentioned, when the digital transition took over and analog disappeared, all portable TV sets were rendered useless and you couldn't really get TV broadcasts that well even with the portable tuners they have because you need a decent antenna to pick up these very fragile broadcasts. Part of me for a while was thinking that the standard is never going to take off because they had talks and even test broadcasts of ATSC MH and ATSC 2.0 in the country, but nothing ever became of it. No one seemed to be interested in the new standard. There is one key difference between these prior standards that never took off and the new ATSC 3.0 next gen TV standard that probably will take off. The main difference is the support from at least two major broadcast companies, Nexstar Media Group and Sinclair Broadcast Group. 
These two companies own and operate about 300 local TV stations across the United States and plan on launching the new ATSC 3.0 standard on their stations in the coming years. Sinclair is already running test broadcasts in Washington, D.C. I think the large media companies are interested in ATSC 3.0 not so much for the improved reception and ability to watch on mobile devices, but the ability to send targeted commercials depending on who you are. Currently, TV stations are sending out the same commercial to their whole audience, no matter if they're 18 years old or 65 years old. From an advertiser standpoint, it's somewhat of a gamble because they are paying for, you know, a demographic based on the show. 16 and pregnant is probably a bunch of 16-year-olds watching it. Price is right, slightly older demographic. But there are still some people that they are paying to show the ad that are irrelevant to the product or service they are selling. There's no doubt in my mind that advertisers will get more bang for their advertising buck on TV stations with this new ATSC 3.0 standard compared to the current standard. And that means more revenue for the local TV stations. One of the questions I've been asked about this new standard is, will I need a new TV set or set-top box? The answer is not right away. The FCC is requiring TV stations that are converting to ATSC 3.0 to continue their old ATSC 1.0 broadcast for at least five years. And this standard hasn't even really started too much yet besides some test broadcasts. So we're still several years away from having to buy new equipment. Some of you are probably saying, what the hell, I just bought a new TV set. Why do I have to keep buying new equipment to continue to receive these over-the-air broadcasts? Is the FCC trying to kill over-the-air TV altogether? Understand that technology changes, and it changes very quickly. Most of us don't have the same cell phone or TV set that we had 5 to 10 years ago. And over-the-air TV is a prime example of this. So in about 5 to 10 years, yes, you may have to pay $40, $50, $100 dollars for a new set-top box, but when you're not paying for TV to begin with, it really isn't that much of an expense, is it? Another question I've received about ATSC 3.0 is, will I need a new antenna in order to pick up this new broadcast signal? And the answer is no. I want to make it very clear. There is no such thing as an HD antenna. There's no such thing as a digital antenna. There's no such thing as a 4K antenna. But I guarantee you within the coming years, you will see these antenna companies start to market these 4K antennas designed for 4K broadcasts. And that is a bunch of bullshit. Antennas are pieces of metal designed to pick up certain frequencies. It doesn't matter if the frequency is analog, digital, HD, 4K, it's designed to pick up the frequency, not the standard that the TV station is broadcasting. You can use a TV antenna from the 1950s. If it's designed for UHF, it's going to pick up a UHF signal. It doesn't matter if it's analog or digital. Another thing I want to address in this video is a conspiracy theory I've been hearing about with ATSC 3.0. Since ATSC 3.0 is two-way communication, meaning that the TV station can get certain information about where you are, who you are, your viewing habits, it has the ability to restrict out-of-market viewing, meaning if you're technically in the scranton Wilkesbury market, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Monroe County, and you want to watch a Philadelphia station, even though reception is better from Philadelphia, Philadelphia versus Scranton Wilkesbury in that area, you can receive a message that says, no, you can't view it, you're outside of the market. Another possibility is because it's two-way communication, the TV stations have the ability to require some kind of sign-in or subscription or to access their broadcast or maybe to access the 4K broadcast. I'm hoping that the broadcasters aren't this stupid and greedy. The standard has a lot of potential to take off and bring in many more viewers that are currently not watching local TV. But if the stations want to shoot themselves in the head, they can do that. Seriously, the current TV standard is very fragile and most people can't get all of their market stations with an indoor antenna. Some of them don't have access to set up an outdoor antenna. Maybe even worse, they have to go on YouTube and watch this guy who refers to himself as Antenna Man just for tips on how to get their local stations they used to get in the analog era. All jokes aside, I think the conspiracy theory about ATSC 3.0 killing free over the air TV as we know it is incredibly unlikely. There's a lot of potential with this standard. I don't think broadcasters are this stupid. A lot of people are going to antennas because they're fed up with paying high cable and satellite bills. My channel went from 500 to nearly 41,000 subscribers in less than a year. So people are cutting the cord and it would be very stupid of the big media companies to shoot themselves in the head. But hey, anything's possible. 
So a summary, ATSC 3.0 is in the works and will be launching over the next few years. The TV stations are required to keep their old ATSC 1.0 broadcast on the air for at least five years after they launch their ATSC 3.0 signal. So you won't have to buy new equipment unless you really want that 4K or interactive content right away. Don't feel you have to buy anything. Most of you will not need a new antenna. Please do not buy into the hype that these antenna companies will be putting out saying that you need this new 4K antenna to get the 4K broadcast that your current antenna can get. In fact, if you hear someone say they have an HD antenna that doesn't work well and it looks something like this, make sure you refer to my channel or just educate them that there's no such thing as an HD antenna and that they should look into buying a better antenna rather than something like this. The new next-gen TV broadcasts are live as we speak in a select few cities such as Washington, D.C. And I would love to test it out and see how it compares to the current ATSC 1.0 standard. The problem is that the only tuner I can find runs about $2,000. Obviously, it's not feasible for me to fork out that much money out of pocket to test out this new standard. But if enough of you are really, really interested in this standard and want me to test this out before it comes to play in the consumer market, I do take channel contributions on Patreon and PayPal. The link is in my description. If enough of you request me to purchase this tuner, I'll buy it and test it out. Thanks again for watching this video and make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you can see upcoming antenna reviews, reception tips, and other cord cutting related videos. Thanks again, have an awesome day.